All right, so when you're organizing your ideas, you will often start with a simple structure. In the early stages of pre-writing and planning your essay, your arrangement of ideas is likely to be fairly simple and often takes the form of a main point or purpose and a list of potential supporting points. Um, and this is the AND organization I've been talking about. And it looks like this. My main point might be my thesis because, and then these would be my paragraphs, A and B and C and D and E. And C, you might tell your reader, see how these all add up to be my main point. Okay, so that's a simple structure. The simple structure is useful, but if it's overused, your essay will be like a keychain with all the keys loosely hanging together. In other words, all the keys go on the chain, but it doesn't really matter what order they come in. You're not really thinking about how those keys relate to one another. They're just there. Okay, I find this metaphor to be helpful. But this is another metaphor I want you to think about. What if you made your reader, your sorry, your paper less like a keychain of ideas and more like Lombard Street in San Francisco, where the road moves back and forth, but you're always on the same road and you know that one curve takes you to the next. I want you to strive to create such dynamic connections between your claims so that your reader moves smoothly through the flow of your ideas. This is what we want to strive for. There are other options besides and. You can build a complex conceptual structure as you write. All you need to do is identify the conceptual relationships between your ideas. Try using conjunctions to link your ideas in different ways. Here are some conjunctions you might find helpful. And, of course, is there, but we also have however, therefore, although, and for example. You can relate your paragraphs to one another with more variety and complexity if you use these types of terms. So think about if X and Y are stand-ins for paragraph points. And I can relate them with X and Y, but I can also try X or Y, or X because of Y, or X and therefore Y, or despite X, yet Y, X however Y. Look at these topic sentences, and how can we connect these paragraphs? It must be recognized that a photograph alone cannot change the world. Though there are many reasons why photographs can be ignored, photography remains one of the best creative mediums available for addressing pressing environmental threats. Now you might recognize these from the paragraph when we talked about topic sentences. Now, what, what word do I need to connect these two sentences? Would it be and? It must be recognized that a photograph alone cannot change the world. And, though there are many reasons why photographs can be ignored, photography remains one of the best creative mediums. Now that doesn't make sense to use and. I think we know what word is missing. However, right? Because this is not um, a parallel point. This is uh, a, a switch back in that road, right? I'm moving. However, even though a photograph alone cannot change the world, uh, photography is still one of the best creative mediums for addressing pressing environmental threats. Okay, so that, however, really helps my reader see that I'm switching directions um, and it keeps us on a nice fluid course. Conjunctions can help you figure out how your ideas relate and you can use them as transitional phrases to show your reader these relationships. So I've listed some here. Um, but I've also listed this um, chart, which you can think about um, which types of words might help you build good transitions between your paragraph ideas. And as you notice, I've included chronology, and we also have many different forms of and, right? 
because those words are actually useful, but we just don't want to rely on them alone. We don't want to rely just on and or just on first, second, and third, because those end up making very listy structures without giving us um, a lot of room to look at interesting relationships and build a more dynamic structure. So what I would recommend is that you look at two of your own topic sentences. So you have to be at a point where you know what your topic sentences are in at least two different paragraphs. If you think those paragraphs should or could go next to one another, then you need to think about what is the relationship between them. Are these, are you comparing things? Um, is there a contrast that you want to point out between the ideas in one paragraph and the ideas in another? Um, think about what the relationship is and then try to revise your opening topic sentence to include a sense of that relationship. All right, go for it.